You see, I don't care how it's done, as long as they wake up. And if I have to be the bad guy that they're going to hate for the rest of their life, that's okay with me. Now you've done quite a bit of work into predicting uh, the forecasts, and you use um, solar weather technique. Um, that's right. Can you tell yeah, us? We've developed beyond that a bit now. We now now use solar lunar action technique because we involve the moon uh, more, and we have a better understanding of the predictability of certain solar events. Uh, but the uh, uh, you're right. The uh, on the website it was first called solar weather technique. And can you give? Um... For, in layman's terms, I'm sure you hate that being a scientist, but can you give us in layman terms uh, how your technique uh, works? Sure, yes. Um, and I would recommend on this, ha go to the website and have a look at some of the, uh, the, the links under uh, the did, news, yeah. news yeah. section. Yeah, and anyone can draw through that and you get PDFs of uh, presentations, for example. Um, now, the essential idea is that the world weather state, that is, you know, what is the jet stream and so forth, everything doing, is controlled essentially by outside influences, namely the rush of magnetic particles from the sun, and how these are modulated by the position of the moon. So that means, therefore, that if we can understand what the sun did in the past, and we know what the moon was doing, we understand those two things together, we can work out in future when there was a similar situation of the solar magnetic activity and the moon's modulation and, and a number of other things in the stratosphere and so forth. But we can de generate, a, if you like, a, 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 a way of describing the past and when we find out when in the future that past came around again, or more or less came around again, we then say, okay, the weather that happened in the past will happen again. And uh, that is the basis of our extreme events forecast, and also our more general seasonal things. I have a question. Um, Sorry, yeah. carry on, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, essentially, in the most recent events, we predicted that the jet stream uh, would first of all be causing this heat in Russia, and then between the 15th and 19th, but especially the 14th or the 15th and 16th, there would be massive events on the sun, and that would shift the jet stream, end the Russian heat wave, and end the, the super deluges in Pakistan. Now, all those things happened, and uh, what particularly happened on the sun was there was a, uh, a double a two sunspot solar flare, which is quite unusual, and then there was a sudden ionospheric disturbance. And following that, that's the ionosphere of Earth was upset. Following that, um, there was uh, the, the changes we, we predicted. So, uh, you know, the essential point is everything that's happened, will happen in the, in the weather, has happened before, and we can identify when the same or similar forcing factors took place. And therefore make a forecast if we have the past data. Now, it's not clockwork because nothing in the past is ever exactly the same as something will happen in the future, but uh, it gives a good, uh, uh, a good idea. And it also means that you can have seasonal effects which will tend to repeat in 132-year steps. So, for example, uh, 132 years ago or so, 2005, uh, 6 and 7, there were massive floods in the summer in England, and these were repeated uh, 132, sorry, uh, that, uh, we've had those 2005, 6 and 7, 132 years before, um, 1875, 1876 and 1877, uh, we also had, had floods in England. Um, now, it doesn't mean that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, but certainly it looks like there's uh, major meanderings of the jet stream happen then and, and, uh, and are happening now. John P. Holdren is 
the White House Science Czar, the current yep. White House Science Czar, I'm sure you know of him. Yeah. Um, he's admitted that there are tests to manipulate the weather. The weather. He, yeah. admi he admits they are geoengineering the planet. And we found, uh, me and Turtle actually, walking Turtle, we found a correlation between increased harp activity and the earthquakes in Haiti and Chile. The graphs, mm. now the graphs I've seen from Harp's own website show a distinct correlation. The former US, mm. the former US Defense Secretary Cohen is on record that they have tectonic weaponry. How difficult, how difficult must it be for a man in your field not to enter these experiments into your equations? <laughs> well, of course, yeah, I mean, what you say is pretty dramatic, and uh, I'm sure, well, the military will try anything, so I'm, I'm prepared to believe something is, is, is happening. Now, whether they actually can control the weather, I, I don't know. You see, I do have a puzzle uh, to an extent, because we predict certain things, and they do happen. Now, um... There are also some things that happen which we didn't predict. Now, whether when we make mistakes, you can say, well, heart was triggering something, I don't know. But that is, is certainly something to, to look at. But I would say there must be a limit to what they can achieve because, the, you know, the energy of the sun and the solar wind is, is astounding. Um, I, I would think if they're going to get these things to work, they would need to choose the time and the sun was also doing something really dramatic and kind of add to it and tip it, tip the effect in a certain way. I see, yeah, like a slingshot. Uh, mm. yeah. Now, it may be that they know more than they're letting on and that they want to divert people away from studying these things or even believing in them uh, uh, because they don't want anyone to get onto their case. And, and, and you know, they... That's why they, the authorities go around promoting global warming nonsense and that man's little pittance of CO2 is, is driving things, which of course is, is an absurdity. But if people believe that, they're never going to believe that the military are trying to control the weather. Well, they might believe 30,000 top scientists that have spoken out against the findings of the 300 yeah. UN scientists <laughs> who... Um, yeah. And a lot of them were fired, you know. Have you come under any yes. pressure yourself? Um, I mean, how have you kept your job, Mr. Corbyn? <laughs> well, I, I run my own business, that, that's why. But I, I have friends in academia who advise, well, I make it very clear, that uh, there's no way I could get a job under the current current situation, uh, even though I am qualified to uh, lecture in physics and maths and they need lecturers in physics and maths. Um, I, I am saying to some leading universities, uh, you, you know, because they do talk to me, that uh, yeah. really one of them, some of them, are actually going to going to have to get ahead of the game sometime and actually declare that the CO2 theory is nonsense. And if they did, they would suddenly get masses of students coming towards them and they could lead the world in uh, changing the paradigm of... Uh, uh, yes. meteorology, climate science and the relationship with astrophysics. So somebody somewhere is going to, uh, you know, jump to that at some point. But I mean, the question is when. Presumably the idea is that when you're a young buck of a teenage astrophysicist or any kind of scientist, you want to be right in the middle of the cut and thrust of of, of, of mm. new, the vanguard of, of science and technology. You want to be right on the tip. Now, the moment you get yeah. to university and you've had uh, 16 years of indoctrination already, by the time you get to university, you, you must be a shell. Unless you're a very strong character, you're just thinking uh, of, of your, your people, your, your kids, you've got to eat yourself and your life, and then yeah. by that time the indoctrination is complete. You know, so, uh, But there are many scientists coming through. I mean, when you speak to the students today or young people interested in your subject or similar subjects, do, do you find there's less of a fire in them these days? Less students? Well, it's see what varies. I'm getting at? I mean, I, I go back is there hope for the future? Is there hope for the future? That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying oh, in the scientific community. Mm -hmm.